Hi, friends. Not me clicking the wrong thing in the very beginning. Uh, <laughs> not like I've had a year of practice or anything. Um, but that's the fun of being live with you here with Pink and Maine. Um, you never exactly know what you're going to get. Um, but tonight I am so excited. We're going to be going over some of the new April products. I'm so excited. It's April. I can't believe how fast this year feels like it's going. Um, but we're going to look at the stamp and die of the month. And then I have one of the elements from the foils, foil of the month, the foilable toner sheets. Um, so we're going to be making a fun shaker card. We played last week with making a shaker card with the new pouches, but today we're going to do like a classic foam tape style shaker card. Um, so if that is more of your speed, if you're not sure you want to go for the pouches, this one will be for you. I did see so many people checking in in the comments already. Um, so we'll do a quick run through. Um, and you know, at, at some point we're going to grow big enough that I'm not going to be able to do the run through and that day will make me very sad. Um, so we got Susan, Lori's checking in from Wisconsin, Deanne's here, um, Virginia's here, Melissa's checking in from Nova Scotia, uh, Susan, so many Susans, Susan K is checking in from Georgia, we got Barbara, um, Judith's here, Maria's here, Connie's here, Kathleen's checking in from SoCal, love that. Um, yeah, Barbara said it's her birthday month. Happy birthday month. You picked a good one. It's going to be a lot of cool stuff. Um, I have the whole April release next to me, and I can promise you that this one is a very good. It's going to be a good release. It's a good month. Um, Tess is checking in from Denver. Love that. Some new, some new names tonight. I love it. All right, let's get switched over. And I'm gonna walk you through my what I've got going on over here. So when I made the supplies list, I'm pretty sure I just forgot about the part where I needed a frame. So I didn't put anything. Um, and I wasn't sure exactly what I was gonna do um, because we used the rectangle stitched frames last week. And I was like, well, I don't know if I wanna do that again. But then when I was looking through my stuff, I have, this the rectangles that we didn't use and these are the two the two biggest ones and they're still like i mean they're not stuck together and like is and that it didn't cut it did but because i didn't mess with it they're still together so it felt like a sign that we should be um like a little extra green and use this piece that's just so perfectly waiting for me as the frame for our shaker card so we're going to do that um jennifer's checking in from ottawa I love that. Welcome, welcome. Um, so yeah, these are our new monthly products. So if you haven't seen, this is the stamp and die of the month. This is called Butterfly Friends. Absolutely so stinking cute, right? So we have our little, our little love uh, bugs. We've got some flowers. We've got this little one holding a flower, sitting on a flower. We've got flying butterflies. We've got actual butterflies, like little mini guys. Um, and I love the sentiment. So don't fear change. Hello, dear friend. Without change, we would not have butterflies or sorry, we would have no butterflies. Spread your wings and thank you. And I just think those are so sweet. Um, with this one, you don't get sentiment strips or the sentiment dies. So you can just stamp them or cut them down yourself. Um, and these are still available to order as a subscription. Um, if you order them as a subscription through the website, you get a discount on them. Um, they will become permanent edition stamp sets after I think it's like the release comes out um, and they'll be available, but you don't get the discount. So it's up to you if you wanna go all in and get the get the subscription for the stamp and die of the month or even just the stamp of the month. It does save you a couple bucks um, and you just don't even have to think about it. But if you don't want that and you just want the single stamp, that's also an option, okay? And then this is not the whole kit for the foil of the month kit. That gets you a foil, um, one of these big kits, a smaller kit, and then I think something else I'm even not remembering right now. Um, but this is the larger 
foilable sheets that come in the stamp of or the foil of the month for April. So this is called floral backgrounds. And these are those very large foilable sheets. One of these will get you either two slimline cards or two A2 cards. So we have these beautiful florals. We have these like more peony style florals. We've got some very bold graphic leaves. Um, these are all kind of in the same idea, right? But they're just like a little different. This one is like a little more of those like closed buds. This one has like way more open and this to me looks like more like roses. Again, with a more bold kind of graphic rose feel. This one has these guys with the little, it starts with a P, I don't remember, in the middle, whatever. These are a little bit more of like a dainty um, leaf, but still solid enough that you're going to get a pop of foil. And then this is like the biggest um, graphic. So some of them are really big florals. And then some of them, like the, it's not the font, right? I get oh, the scale. There you go. The scale is a little smaller. So whatever makes you happy. I want to do the smaller one because it's going to be in our shaker card as the background. And I want to make sure that you see as much of that floral as possible. So if it was the super big one, there's fewer flowers, right? Like you're only going to see maybe one or two. This whole bottom part is probably going to be covered with our butterfly and our shaker bits. Where if it's this one, you see way more flowers in the window. So just something to keep in mind, the scale and what your design is. But these are just so beautiful for spring and summer. They make um, really good like Mother's Day card backgrounds too. That's the vibe that I get from them. So really perfect for that April, May, June. So many like, you know, graduation, Mother's Day, birthdays, anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this down. And if you guys have questions about any of the stamp of the month, die of the month, foil of the month, I might not always have the answer I try really hard, but I might not always, but if I don't, I will get you the answer. Let's make sure, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that frame's gonna fit perfectly right over that. In fact, I'm gonna cut it just a tiny bit smaller. Just, we're just gonna shave just that little bit off of the end from each side, each direction. Well, you know, length and width. And that's going to help it to make sure that nothing hangs over um, from that frame. It's just going to give us a little bit more wiggle room, a little grace. So love that. And to foil that, I believe this is the foil that came out last month special with the kit. This is the tinsel purple. It's so fun. It has those like little fiber, but it's like holographic tinsel fiber. And I just thought that would be really pretty on our flowers to go behind our shaker bit so that it's bold enough that you're gonna be able to see it and it's gonna be able to compete. So we're gonna use that. But first we need to warm up our mist, or not our misty, our mink, our mini mink. And we need to stamp out our butterflies so that they can dry a little bit before we color. So there we go. we're going to get that up to three. We're going to leave these guys to the side and get this stamped. The texture of that foil, right? It's so crazy, Christina. It's like I've never seen foil like these um, tinsel foils. They're so fun. So I, I think I want to stamp the, um, I don't know. I was leaning, let's see. I was leaning the fl a flower and a butterfly, but now
Yeah, I think I want the butterfly sitting on the flower. And we'll do a little banner with the sentiment um, underneath. Um, maybe just hello, dear friend. I love a hello card. I have many. I never get sick of them. So I'm going to give that a good little bit of space around it so that I have room when it's time to die cut these. And we'll just stamp it in black so that it sticks out really nice and is very legible. And we're going to go in with our Asphalt Premium Dye Ink. And I'm stamping onto Copic Express It paper. That is my alcohol blending paper of choice, alcohol ink paper. I think we need to re-ink this ink pad soon. That hello is just, they're also new, right? New stamps. Don't, don't ink the way we always want them to. Let me just condition this a little bit. Clean that ink off. And I'm just going to do that hello, dear friend, one more time. Perfect. Melissa, I agree. Pink and Maine has the best foils. Michelle works so hard to make sure that she gets the most beautiful and like a truly versatile range of these cheer foils. Okay. So let's set these aside to dry while we work on our foil background. And look, I even remembered last time to leave this in a place where I would actually find it. How amazing. Hey, Elizabeth, thanks for checking in and Dawn's here. Welcome, welcome. Right, let's flip this around and cut some of this foil. Oh, it's spring break here this week and my little kiddos are out of school. And of course it's raining all week. So they're like so bored. Man, those scissors need to go in the garbage. Looks like somebody cut wire or something with them. Of course, right? They're my good, like, no stick Teflon ones. But they're so gnarled up. Okay. I have a clean ish, a mostly clean microfiber towel. So we're going to dust off our floral. We'll get that in our little folder there. We'll dust off the back side of our foil and pop that right on top. We're going to double check that from the back just to make sure that this is all covered with foil. So pretty side up. Pretty side of foil up, pretty side of um, our foilable sheet. And we're just gonna let the mink pull that through on its own. We're not gonna force it. Um, oh, I'm in Delaware on the East Coast and it is just pouring rain today. We got thunderstorms. So much rain, it rained all day yesterday, and apparently it's gonna to rain tomorrow and Thursday. So, um, oh yeah, Virginia, perfect. Virginia's been wanting to see this foil get used. Um, she has it, but she hasn't used it yet. So, perfect timing for us. Um, oh, and Melissa, someone. <laughs> Well, this is said someone on a live foiled a rogue hair. That would happen to me. All of this, I'm like picking dog hair and my hair out of everything all the time. So 
I, I put it on your 2024 Caitlin's Live bingo card because at some point I'm sure we will do that. Okay, unplugged my meat and popped it over to the side. A snowstorm tomorrow, Don. That's that's no bueno. Don't love that for you. Um, so Susan, the way I store my foil, sorry, just scrolled back, um, is not the best way I would say that exists to store it, but uh this is how the foils come when you order them from Pink and Me. And so as a design team member, instead I don't get a full roll of any of the foils. I get um like samples, I get partial pieces of each foil. Um, and so what I do is roll them up and put them in that storage that they came with. But she's been getting like real generous with our samples lately. And so even even these have not been the easiest to roll. But as long as you're rolling and there's not any like harsh creases, it won't like it doesn't leave any marks. And at least like with all of that in there, I know it's not going to get dusty. And then I just pop it in there. But I'm that is my makeshift storage version. So if anyone has a better system that they have found, please share it with us here. Because I only recommend this maybe a six out of 10. It's been working, but I know there have to be there has to be a better system. Um, right, the reality of live streams, very true. Uh, oh no, lots of people are getting snow tomorrow. I feel like snow in March is bad enough. Snow in April is uncalled for. All right, so. We're gonna go ahead and peel that off. That looks like it worked really well. So you get that really beautiful holographic rainbow, but it also just kind of has this like silvery purple, like really pale, almost like a lavender kind of base. But that that shimmer is just so pretty. And I love that it's a little like fractured. It's a little stripy. I just think that's so fun. And of course we get the reverse, right? We have our reverse image that we can use on another piece of um, solid toner paper. The clear paper holders. Mm, the transfer sheets or you're saying you wonder if the other ones would work oh we're saying to store your i got it i'm picking it up now don said maybe those clear paper holders to store um the foils i don't know about that um jennifer the mink was set on three i always run uh, my regular foil through on three and it takes like a minute to warm up, which is lovely. So this is going to be our background. That's going to be our frame. So we're moving and grooving. So let's go ahead and we'll zoom in here. I think that looks pretty good. Um, how lights flash from a disco ball. Yeah, I love that it has just that little bit of extra texture to it. So I kind of want to stay in the soft purples, but with like a little pop of color for our little scene here. So I think I'm going to go with, um, do we want B uh, these or do we want BBs? I think I want these. I think we're going to go v06 to start yeah I like that. put this a little in the angle so you can see 
Um, I think I'm going to make his body a little darker. So let's just start with these wings. I want to pull this color a little further out on the outer sections than the inner. My dog is on the floor snoring next to me. Hopefully you can't hear that. Um, <laughs> snow is waiting for your return has it out for you go on all right so we're gonna go in with so we did vo6 now we're gonna jump to vo4 and pull that color out just a little bit further and then vo1 should be a pretty big jump but that's what's going to give us that really pretty gradient I love that. Um, I think I want to stick with purples. I think I just want a much darker purple. Maybe we'll swap undertones a little bit. So let's go with the BB20s. So we'll start with 29. And we'll do that on our these inner design, like wing sections as well as the body. And for these, you could also just color these in solid, these wing pieces, because they don't have, they're not dimensional. So the shading that we're adding isn't meant to really make them look 3D, because it's just a print on the wing. But I just still like the continuity, I guess of it being shaded like that. And I added a little a little mark over where I think his nose would be. So that was BV29. Now we're gonna jump to BV25, which is a pretty good jump. So we're gonna just take our time and let those two colors kind of marry, marry each other in the middle. And you know what, for the wings, I think I'm just going to fill because there's not a ton of space. And we'll save that the lightest shade, the 23, just for the face and the body. That would be cute. Oh, Don, you got to go to um, the Pink and Main store. That's right. <gasps> Oh no, my BB23 is dead. Look, she doesn't have anything left. I don't even know if I really used her. Those darn caps got me again. If you guys didn't know, uh, there's been a lot of issues with Hopic's lids not being me correctly and it's drying out markers. So Pink and Main has, I think they're the, are they the Olo markers? Pink and Main carries another alcohol marker in the store. And every time I lose a Copic, I uh, am more and more tempted to try them out. So I uh, compromise with a BVO2. And I still think that looks super cute. He's so cute. Michelle is a doll. Oh, I bet. Missy's checking in from San Diego. That's lovely. Um, yeah, Olo. Perfect. Um, okay. What? I think I want a little bit of yellow, but I don't want the whole thing yellow. So maybe we'll do like a yellow center with a white petal, like a little daisy feel. I think that would be cute. Um, and I want like a soft yellow. I don't want 
super vibrant. And maybe let's go with the 30s. Why 35? And we'll do under his little butt and wings. And then right along the bottom. Thank you so much, Christina. And then we'll go Y32 and pull that out. Just a little bit. And then, so I need to, I really need to fill in some gaps on my, on my yellow markers. We're gonna go Y double zero, which is not exactly the undertone I'm going for, but I need it for the, the bright, like the lightness that it has. All right, and then I think we're gonna go neutral gray for these little petals because the background, like our the white of the foilables is like a very neutral true white. So I'd be worried if we did like a, a warm gray, it would look weird. And I'm gonna just do a little line through the middle. This is an N2. And then flick a tiny bit of color right along that petal too, each one. And you know what, I think that's enough. I don't even really wanna blend that out. It just kind of breaks up those petals a little bit. I guess we should add a dot of yellow to the one he's holding, huh? And then let's keep it really simple and we'll just do a YG61. Super simple. Oh, I love him. I think he could be cutified even a little bit more with some white dots. So let's, this is a eight, a Jelly Roll 08. And I'm just gonna add some little, almost like stitch lines. That's not really what, I, what I'm going, like I don't want it to look like it's a stitched. I just think kind of breaking it up and adding some color to these is cute. And then just some little dots inside the dots. And he can just have like a little shiny head. Here we go. I just like that that kind of breaks it up a little bit. We're not going for realism here. He's a cutie patootie. Okay, so let's grab the dies. Uh, yes, Virginia, the tip of that marker is like absolutely, like completely solid. Like nothing's coming off of it. It's completely dried out all the way through. And the same for the, the chisel nib. Like there's literally nothing left in it, unfortunately. Um, is it you? Yes. And then I need a sentiment strip die. I have those little guys, let's see. These might be too little. We might just have to cut it. These are too big. I only have the tiny ones and the extra large ones. We've talked about this before. Um, well, that, I don't know, that's gonna be too small. I'm gonna go for it, but I'm really gonna order. I know I say that a lot, but I really am gonna order um, the other, like the middle size. Soon, maybe this week, maybe tonight if I remember. My mom's here. She's watching from upstairs. So mom remind me. And we'll order the middle size when this is over, when we're done. This is over. Um, 
and I do think I want this a little bit, I don't want it centered, right? I want the words a little too, sorry, my last also, uh, also thing. I want it a little to the right of the banner. So we have room to kind of tuck, tuck this under our little butterfly. I'm gonna run that through my big shot zips die cutting machines. See moment of truth. Oh, I think that will definitely work. I still want the bigger size so that I don't have to sweat it out every time, but that is cute. And I'm kind of, that's the kind of idea I'm going for it, kind of coming from underneath that little flower. All right, let's get you guys back up where you go. And let's, okay. When I am storing a new stamp set, this is what I do. I always save my die packaging because the die packaging is usually a little sliver bigger, right? Can you guys see? It's literally like an eighth of an inch, but it is bigger than the stamp. So, I always save the die package. I cut off the sticky fold over part and I cut off the hang tag part, right? The part that has that little thing cut out so you can hang it from a hook. And I slip these back in upside down. But now for me, that opening is the right way. And we take our stamp packaging from its little sleeve and put that in the back. So now we're pink and main logos on the front and back. I can slide this guy right in and I have my stamps and my dies. And you might say to yourself, well, I wonder what she's gonna do with that packaging. And if you thought, I bet she's gonna use it for her shaker, then you would be right because that is what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna use it for our shaker window. So our panel that we're, our frame that we're working in, I'm gonna keep these together just cause it'll be easier to cut. Um, but I want to trim off that bottom sticky section again. And we want just the tiniest little bit, the same as our flower panel. We want it just a little bit under five and a half. And I want to trim the fold off of this side. So right now I have like a book, right? It's split, it has the fold in the middle. So I'm gonna cut on that folded line. So now I can line this up just short of four and a quarter and trim that. And now I have two pieces of acetate that would fit our frame. Perfectly. So I'm going to save the other one because you know me, give me a couple days and I'll need another shaker card prompt. I love me a shaker card. And when I found out that Pink and Main was having all these new confettis, my little shaker heart just soared. Get these put away. Oh, yeah, Cindy, 100% true. So sometimes. Um, she, the packaging that our stamps and stuff come in, they have um, holes, like hole punched holes in them. Pink and mains don't really have that hole punch, but some brands do. So Cindy is right. If you're going to do use the packaging like I did, you definitely want to double check that your packaging does not have um, and usually it's only on one side or it's like at the top or bottom so you can kind of trim around it. Um, but yes, yeah, Cindy, thank you. That is a very good point. I once again have left my um, words, words are hard today. My tape runner at work. So I'm going to use this red line tape because it's what I have. I would not normally use this for this job, 
but here we are. So I'm gonna just go all the way around. I just find that using liquid glue to adhere the plastic acetate is just annoying. It's just a pain in the butt. So instead of fighting with it slipping and sliding around, I would much rather use double-sided tape. And you don't have to use double frames like I'm using. Um, you can do a single frame. You can stack multiple frames up if you don't want to do foam. Um, but I do think instead of having to trim foam down or be so worried about is it going to show from the sides, that if you can do a thicker frame like this, go for it. Whether it's the circle or the rectangle, um, I think the double frame is so nice. Um, Cindy just got her shaker bits, her confetti in her package. But yesterday, love that. They're so pretty. I haven't, I have my whole drawer of them right here next to me. I haven't figured out what color we're going to use yet or colors. Um, so now I have that backing paper off. I am just going to lay my packaging over this. I have one little spot that need a wrinkle. All right, that looks pretty good. So now this is a little window all the way around. Perfect. And, uh, Pamela's checking in too. Let's see you. All right, so foam tape. The next step, we're gonna sandwich our acetate between that double-sided tape and our foam tape. And we want to create a nice little well. And if you are worried about getting your foam tape the right length, if you kind of just hold it sideways over your project, you can kind of measure it out without anything sticking somewhere it shouldn't be sticking. And if you wanted to put like a ton of shaker stuff in your uh, frame, you could double up on foam tape for sure. Or if you're gonna do like clay bits instead of a flat um, confetti, I would definitely say double up. I think for what I'm looking for from my shaker card, I feel like um, my single layer is going to do just fine. Let go. Let go. Let go. There we go. So the last thing, actually, there's two things. I'm gonna try to not overdo it, but I want to take a little bit of my anti-static powder brush and run it along the edge of my foam. And I didn't even pull the brush the whole way out of the holder, right? Like I just barely kind of push this down because there's just the tiniest little bit of powder then coming out. Um, if you put too much powder in here, it's going to make it cloudy and like chalky. And that's not what we're going for. I just want to cut down a little bit on that static powder. Um, sorry, not powder. The static cling that gets on the acetate because it'll hold all of our shaker bits. So I'm thinking, I was thinking maybe... What are you? The snowfall confetti that's like white with a holographic, like purple iridescent. That could be pretty. And this is our butterfly. So we have two different purples. We have our like lighter and our darker. I kind of like the darker. It's purple orchid. So maybe those. I think yellow might be too much. 
but maybe the eggnog for just like a little, a little something because that flower. So what I'm gonna do is put my confetti in the middle of my floral panel. And I'm just sprinkling some on. Um, Pamela, some I'm a, I'm live on Facebook and um, YouTube. So you might hear me answering questions or responding to comments on Facebook because I see you're on YouTube. So that might be why. Um, so this snowfall, what I didn't realize is it has some iridescent, some um, that are like translucent. They're not clear, but they're like a little cloudy. And then some it looks like that are more of like a, some are more of like a neutral shimmer or iridescent and some are like very blue. So that's fun. I like that there's even more variation than I thought. And then the eggnog is just gonna be like the softest little hint of yellow. So I kind of like, you don't want these to go to the edge because then your foam will stick to them. But I kind of like making them a little more flat, a little more spread out and flat. Um, so Missy, I didn't use the new foil, but we used one of the new foilable panels. So this is from the floral backgrounds. What's it called? Yeah, floral backgrounds foilable sheets. This part comes, this comes in the foil of the month kit. And we used this smaller floral, but you get eight different designs and they're very pretty. Um, right, you're already sticky. So we're gonna remove all four. I've seen people that only take it off like halfway, but I would just be worried I'd shake something up anyway and being extra careful would actually end up making something worse. So we're just gonna go for it. And that's why I like to trim off that little bit extra from both edges because it just gives me a little extra wiggle room. So that is our shaker. I love that. So we do get, I like to bling it across the desk. We do get a really nice little variety of iridescent purple and yellow. They move around really well. We probably could have done with a second layer, but I'd rather them have to get kind of like manipulated than having this like giant super thick part. That's just me though. And I also really don't mind all this open space because it's a shaker and the foil and super fun. So I think that I like where those are right at the bottom. So let's get this little butterfly glued down. First, and we'll kind of retuck that banner. So I'm going to have the bottom of my stem touch the middle part of my frame. And I want to make sure that his wing doesn't go over the edge of the card. It's just going onto that foil. And then while everything is still wet, um, which we have a couple, like a little bit of extra time because it's on plastic, I can just kind of tuck this right underneath. You can even get out our little tea ruler. Give that a little nudge so it's nice and level. And you could put like a hello or something else high inside. But I, I know we've talked about that like Simple is not my strong suit, and there's so much else going on, but I kind of really love the butterfly and the banner being a little smaller, like a little softer. Right, there's enough. <laughs> it's enough. And I love that color mixture. I think it's so pretty. So yeah, 
that is our little fun shaker card using the stamp and die of the month and then that new foilable that's part of the foil of the month kit oh it makes me so happy and it goes so well with that foil that um the foil that we used was the pencil purple and then i didn't name colors in the supplies list because i really wasn't sure where what i was going to end up with so we had snowfall purple orchid and eggnog those are the confettis that we used so those are going to go right back in my little drawer that i have right here and i love that i can just take it out and bring it over with me um so yeah that is everything for tonight i am not positive what we're doing on thursday yet so if you have any requests for products or techniques or foil colors or embossing powder colors or whatever you want please please let me know in the comments i go back and check every week i love your requests um even if there's a theme that you need to be creating for coming up this spring and you need some inspiration i would love to work on that for you too so yeah thank you all so much um i see even more people leaving comments now at the end new names that i don't remember seeing before so annette um glendine thank you so much everybody for coming to hang out i will see you back here on thursday at 8 30 p.m eastern and until next time, guys, happy crafting. Have a good night.